Hi everyone, my name is Joe McGregor. I'm a glaciologist and geophysicist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. And I've been asked to present to you on uh, work that Operation Icebridge has done uh, that is relevant to rings. I was the last project scientist for Operation Icebridge. The mission as a whole ended in 2021, uh, but its final Antarctic campaigns were in 2019. Uh, I all, much of this material will be very familiar to you if you attended the 2021 presentation I gave to the RINGS group, so I'll try to keep this brief. Uh, I've been asked to speak to future surveys too, and to the best of my knowledge, there are no currently planned and funded uh, airborne aerogeophysical surveys of Antarctica that NASA has, has approved. Uh, there, there are occasional one-off campaigns in the Arctic, uh, particularly over sea ice, but none, uh, none for the Antarctic. So this will be purely a retrospective. Uh, if you want a lot more detail on Operation Icebridge, I encourage you to check out our Reviews of Geophysics article uh, that was published last year. So very briefly here, many of you know, uh, Operation Icebridge had a multi-instrument multi strategy to address many science requirements over both land ice and sea ice, ice sheets and glaciers. And so we used a, a variety of equipment to accomplish this and also a variety of aircraft. Uh, one of the core instruments, of course, because we were trying to bridge the gap between ISAT and ISAT-2 were laser altimeters. And for most of I Icebridge, uh, we usually deployed some version of the airborne topographic mapper shown on the left. Uh, and then, of course, we were very keen on ice thickness and snow thickness, including over sea ice. And so we deployed a variety of radar sounders to uh, measure uh, ice thickness and snow thickness uh, in a variety of terrains. Uh, for other types of uh, instruments that are quite relevant to rings objectives, we also often carry gravimeters and sometimes magnetometers as well for bathymetry and geologic context. This slide here shows all of the Antarctic surveys that occurred, including ones that were in collaboration with IceCap, uh, over the course of the, uh, uh, of the lifetime of the mission. So you can see there were predominant fo uh, foci on uh, West Antarctic outlet glaciers, on grounding zones in East Antarctica and the Filtron and Ronnie, uh, in the McMurdo, McMurdo area as well, and with ice cap, and then later on with the G5, also some focus uh, on the East Antarctic coastline as well. So uh, we covered uh, quite a lot of ground, and uh, most of that was from off-continent bases, Punta Arenas, then later Ushuaia, and, uh, and at the end Hobart, although we did also deploy uh, for, the, for the core ice bridge activities uh, from uh, McMurdo a couple of times. Uh, I do want to clarify here presently uh, that uh, NASA has no current aircraft uh, that can operate out of uh, McMurdo uh, that wouldn't be a contract aircraft like a Bassler or a Twin Otter. In other words, um, the P-3 deployed there in 2013, uh, but it is very, very unlikely to ever be allowed to do that again. Now, our original plan was for it to deploy there in 2017, but that uh, simply didn't turn out to be possible and uh, because of evolving skiway conditions there. And that's unlikely to change anytime soon. So uh, this just shows very briefly the deployed aircraft, the, the ones that focusing here on the ones that deployed in Antarctica. Um, I've highlighted the ones I think are most relevant to rings in green, in particular the G5, which came online toward the end of Operation Icebridge and which we deployed out of Hobart, uh, which is a, a smaller aircraft with a smaller crew, especially compared to say the DC-8. Uh, some of those numbers for those who are familiar with Antarctic airborne campaigns are probably a little scary and yeah, they were scary trying to organize. <laughs> uh, but the G5 is a smaller footprint uh, that can go really far and can still carry uh, a lot of the comp uh, instrument suite that we need to achieve rings objectives most of the time. Uh, this map shows the, uh, this is from Bed Machine. Uh, I, I think this might be version two, but I'm not certain. Uh, and this shows in, uh, in dark magenta, the uh, Operation Icebridge lines that have been included in Bed Machine and in Light Magenta, the uh, ones that uh, were not. And I just checked the, uh, the, the user guide for, the ver for Bed Machine version two 
and it does not appear that some of the later Operation Ice Bridge data have yet made its way in, particularly 2018 and 2019. Uh, but I'm not absolutely certain on that. I'll defer to Mathieu uh, for further information. Of course, uh, they will all make their way in there. Eventually, all of those data are now available for uh, through uh, through the end of Ice Bridge for all of the Antarctic campaigns. Not yet the case for the Arctic campaigns. My apologies. So uh, very briefly here, I'll just run through a couple different radar grams, just illustrating some of the different sounders that were deployed. Um, this is, uh, that could be deployed for rings like radar grams. This is uh, McCord's version five uh, on a Bassler in 2017. And so this, uh, this was only the belly array. Uh, and it, this is a survey over the Transantarctic Mountains, but a lot of quite varied topography, uh, even if the ice is uh, relatively cold. And, uh, and so you can see examples of some of the challenges there. Uh, but this system is still doing quite well. And uh, the, here we only deployed the belly array, but this would be analogous to uh, what uh, Avi would deploy on the on uh, Polar 6, but they have the, they deploy the wing arrays as well, typically. And then uh, a more recent example, this is an a, example going over Denman Glacier, which is a particularly steep trough. Uh, with the McCord system that Creases was able to put together very, very quickly uh, on the G5. Um, less than a year to design and build this whole thing, and then all sorts of typical uh, last-minute changes, uh, some totally out of Creases' control uh, that made it an even more ch challenging integration, but they pulled it off. So uh, as you can see here, the system can readily sound uh, a couple kilometers of ice, maybe a bit more challenged in the troughs. I, it's a, you'd have to look more in detail in the picks to see how much you, you trust those, but uh, still a relatively capable system, uh, even if it has a relatively uh, narrow bandwidth. And then finally, I uh, just mentioned another rings-like survey that seems quite relevant uh, from the high car system. I'm not sure which particular iteration this was. Uh, Duncan can speak better to that, but. Uh, many surveys uh, in done in collabor collaboration between IceBridge and IceCap that uh, collected uh, some good data uh, all across the ground, uh, relatively close to the grounding zone in some places. And uh, that's it from me. So uh, a retrospective on the types of data that IceBridge collected, uh, where it surveyed, what kind of aircraft we deployed, and uh, again, just to clarify, no future NASA Antarctic campaigns uh, are funded and that are, are, are going to be collecting the kind of data that we would need for rings. Not to say there aren't many ideas floating out there or that we tried to continue Ice Bridge to be in some form to be able to do these types of surveys because we did, uh, but uh, that's the, the current state of affairs from uh, the, the NASA Goddard side here. So thank you for your time.